Hey guys, this is Jamie with Titan Concealment. Uh, there was a little bit of interest in the membraneless adapter I'd made for my HD200. Um, so I'm just gonna show a video of how it works, what I needed to make it work uh, and to build it. And then I'll do a quick demonstration of um, actually making a, a mold out of it. So uh, what I have here is just a Glock 19 set up for uh, one of my inside the waistband holsters. Um, the frame that we're going to use to uh, create the seal to push down on the kydex around the mold is made from uh, Maker Beam. Uh, it's just hobby stuff, uh, extruded aluminum, half inch wide. Uh, you can build all kinds of stuff with that. I just used it to build the frame that is adjustable um, instead of you know the big old extruded aluminum. Now. The only problem with this is that it has no weight. It's very lightweight, um, and because it's so thin, it is a little flimsy, so if you push down on one corner, the other corner is not going to push down. So what that means is when you go to push down in the kydex and create that seal, it's not gonna work all that great. So what I haven't done yet that I do plan on doing is just building with a couple more pieces, um, kind of a bar that comes up so I can just hold on to it like this, push down all at once, and then hit the switch for my surge tank. Um, that's kind of one of the benefits to the Swift Press is that it doesn't have a surge tank hooked up to it, um, whereas most of us with an HD200 do have a surge tank hooked up, so you still need to operate that surge tank. Um, if you leave it open, then you're talking about just vacuuming out that whole surge tank volume plus whatever it is that you're working with, either it's an HD200 or an HD300. Uh, it's a lot of vacuum space or volume. Uh, so what I've done is gotten a piece of Lexan that covers the entire length of the vacuum surface of the HD200. Um, this is the membrane, just so you're aware of what's going on here. This is the, the membrane top to the HD200, which is flipped up. I just keep it flipped up and out of the way. Um, once you get your Lexan cut to size, uh, just get some type of insulation uh, or gasket material to create a gasket. Um, I used insulation tape uh, out of the HVAC department. Um, I used two layers of this just to get it to be big enough where when I push down uh, to create a nice tight seal. Um, so after you've got your Lexan cut to shape, you've got your gasket made, um, what I do is cut a few holes, just uh, you know, basically a two by two square. Um, if you want more, do more. Uh, you know, I haven't tried to go any bigger, so I don't know if it would be any better or if it would just be the same. Um, in between the uh, Lexan and the mold is Scotch-Brite. It works, it's not great. It is a little flimsy also. Um, you know, an aluminum or steel breather mesh would definitely work better. It's gonna give you a much more solid surface to lay the mold on top of. Um, I found that sometimes one side wants to be a little thicker than the other, giving you an issue with where the molds lay uh, next to each other. Um, for the most part, it all works out right in the sight channel, so you're gonna fix that anyway. Um, other than that, there's really no other issues to be aware of. Um, the total cost for materials and all, the Lexan, the foam tape, the Maker Beam um, pieces, uh, I'm, I'm into it for about $50, $55. So that's about as cheap as it gets to create a membraneless attachment for your HD200. Uh, I'm sure that it's not going to last forever, but it is $55. So. Uh, if you have a way of improving it, um, I, I went with, I think it's quarter inch Lexan. Uh, going half inch or three quarters would definitely be better. It's gonna be more expensive also, but it will be better. Um, so if you find a way to make it any better, please let me know, share a video, share some pictures, do something just to get it out there. Um, I would really love to hear what you guys do to improve on this. Just gonna check and see if the Kydex is ready here. I need mean, just another second or so. While we're waiting, I'll just describe some other problems you may have with the membraneless former. You may have heard some of the uh, people that are using the Swift Press or their own attachments, um, how it's difficult to get the mold out from the Kydex once you've uh, pressed it. Um, that's because it is so damn good, it sucks it down to every crevice and corner. Uh, anything you can imagine gets pulled right into detail. Uh, so the Kydex is perfectly formed to your mold. That means it's gonna be extremely tight to get it back out. So what I've done is a very, very precise method of creating draft angles, uh, which is just an angle that is 
a downward slope outward all around the mold. Uh, this precise method is known as chopping it with a Dremel. <laughs> I just grind away, give it an angle, just make it a little easier to, to, to pull it out. Usually a couple taps on the bench and it pops right out. All right, so we're good now with our Kydex. Let's just lay this down over top. Just gonna push down here. And there you have it. That is about as good as it gets. We're down at 30 inches of vacuum. Uh, so now what I would do is I'm just gonna blow some compressed air over it just to help it cool down a little quicker. Um, just another way to help speed up your production line and uh, get these things in and out faster. Now the vacuum just released, it's because it's basically cooled low enough where it's no longer conforming right to the vacuum space. I'd say we're pretty good. Just gonna knock this thing out of here, show you the inside of the mold. There we have it. Great lines. Let's see if I can get that glare out of there. Ah, damn fluorescent lights. Anyway, less than 60 bucks, get yourself a membraneless adapter, and uh, that's as easy as it gets, you know? The only downside to this, um, other than, you know, being able to get these cranked out really quickly and get exact molds uh, perfectly shaped, you get some waste out of this. So, uh, there's ups and downs to it. Um, if it's more beneficial for you to get these out, uh, back on the bench ready for cutting and, and finishing, you know, in under a couple minutes each, um, that's definitely worth the waste. You know, if you want to get 50 or 60 of these done, uh, bang them out each day, and then move on to the next one, this is where it's at. This is what you want to do. Um, if you're worried about any type of waste and you want to minimize that waste as much as possible, you'd be better off with the, with the membrane. Um, but this is, this is far superior in definition, um, overall shape, and what you're able to do uh, with certain blocking attachments, um, getting those nice angles on the muzzle, uh, starting to see the lines in the barrel, things like that. There's some things that I'm working on, I'm not going to share yet, but uh, the only way for me to get certain things done was to move over to a system like this, where I don't have to worry about inconsistent um, whether it's 50-50, 60-30, 60-40, whatever it is that comes out. I say 60-30 because sometimes I would add an attachment and it would leave a gap in between, um, in between the muzzle or in between uh, the dust cover on both sides. There would be a gap because it, it, you know, there'd be a thicker side of the gun only on one side. So that makes a big difference here when you do it like this instead of just doing it with a foam press or even with a membrane former. Um, so, if you guys have any uh, questions, comments, you want to, uh, you know, talk some smack about my video making capabilities, go right ahead. 
Um, just uh, let me know about what you would do to you know improve on this. This is you know what I'm guessing to be kind of a first generation adapter for this thing, as I really haven't seen anybody else post anything about it. So if it is in fact uh, one of the first ones out there, then uh, just tell me how you would improve it. Let's let's kind of get this thing better and get it nailed down and make this thing uh, better for everybody. You know, that's that's what we're all here for. So, uh, yeah, drop me a line and uh, let me know what you do to make it better.